the two hardware components that make it easy to build a Helium based Internet of Things application is the Helium Element and the Helium Atom. I'll start with the Element. The Helium Element is this white box that works as a router. It comes in two different versions. The one that I have here allows me to connect the Helium into my wired Ethernet network, which is great if your application is say based in a factory or a home which you've, where we do have access to a wired Ethernet network. But if your application doesn't have access to Ethernet networking, then you can get the version of the element with cellular networking. So then you can build say applications that are uh, based out in the field, so agricultural applications or mobile applications and things of that sort. I don't know exactly what the range of each element is and how far the signal can reach, but looking at the documentation that Helium provides, one element is sufficient for a small office building. If you have something larger, like perhaps a, a large factory floor, then two of them should be able to cover that uh, distance within that enclosed area. And if you go out in the open, of course, the range increases dramatically. So these devices come with two antennas, so they communicate to different frequencies. So you've got the 2.4 gigahertz and the 915 megahertz, the, the second antenna, or 868 megahertz, depending on whether you are in the US or Europe or other parts of the world. So depending on where you buy the device from, you'll get the antennas to match the location. Now, my version of the element, as I said, has got the Ethernet connectivity option. So all you've got to do in order to get it plugged in is to take your Ethernet cable that ships in the box and plug it into the Ethernet port and the other end. Let's see if I can turn this around. There you go. The other end will go to an available port on your router or switch. I just plugged it right here. Once you do that, just plug in power and the device will begin to communicate with the network and it will try to contact Helium. I'm going to show you in the next lecture how to connect and how to configure your dashboard, your Helium dashboard, so that you can actually see this device in your dashboard. Uh, right now, it's just going to try and connect the internet and eventually that LED will turn and indicate that it's connected. There you go, green light, all good. So I can put this aside now and have a look at the Atom. So the Atom that I've got here comes uh, connected to a shield adapter that fits on the Arduino Uno like that. If you are targeting Raspberry Pis, then you still have the Atom device in the middle, but you can also purchase an appropriate hat adapter that will fit onto your Raspberry Pi. So then you can use it with your Raspberry Pi. And uh, there's also provision for embed devices. But in this demonstration, of course, we'll be working with the Arduino. In terms of communication between the Atom device and the Arduino, this is done in a serial way using the serial interface. On the adapter, you've got a bunch of headers here and depending on which headers you, you use a jumper wire on, you can select which serial port on your Arduino you can use or you want to use. In my examples, I have configured the Atom to communicate with me at my Arduino using software serial. And you can see here, just zoom in actually like that, so I can give you a better look. So you can see here that the transmit pin is connected to the Arduino digital pin 7 and that the receive pin on the Atom is connected to the Arduino digital pin number 8. So here's my Arduino. Digital pins 7 and 8 will be used as software serial 
by my Atom so that the Arduino and the Atom communicate using software serial. And all of the other pins on the Arduino are available so that you can use them to connect sensors, actuators or other devices as you see fit. There's plenty of pins left to use. So all you've got to do is to connect or to plug the shield onto your Arduino. Oops, hang on. Uh, I need to fix the Arduino's header <laughs> a little bit. Got out of alignment. All right, try again. And there you go, ready. Next thing is to just plug it in. The blue and the red LEDs on the Atom indicate communications. So communications between the Atom device and the element, they will try to connect. They're not really configured yet. So this um, Atom module doesn't really know that it needs to talk to the element module first. This is something that I need to configure in the Helium dashboard, which I'll show you how to do that in the next lecture. But you can see now that the, the Atom so the red LED is blinking. The Atom is trying to communicate with the Helium network. So, and that's just happened by me providing power, that's all. In the next few lectures, what I'll do first is to show you how to configure your element and your Atom using the uh, dashboard, the Helium dashboard. Then I'm going to run a couple of example sketches that come with a library that supports Arduino uh, Helium applications. And then I'm going to walk you through a little uh, environmental IoT application that I built that just uses a couple of sensors. So a DHT 22, a BMP 180 and an LED. And although you can breadboard this hardware, uh, in my case, I decided to put it on a prototyping shield just to keep things a little bit more tidy. And also because I wanted to leave this application running for a few days just to become really comfortable with it and its reliability before I did these lectures. So actually I had this uh, application with a shield on top of the Atom for about a week and uh, things are running really, really smoothly. So let's move on to the next lecture where I'll take you to the Helium website and show you a few really quick things about the hardware and then get into the dashboard and configure the element and the Atom. <music>